Sense Apart has a new version 3.0 of our add-on instructions for RS Logix 5000. And this video is going to cover how to use them in these three steps. Uh, first, you define the visor on the network, and then you import our sample PLC routine, which includes the three add-on instructions. And then you just customize that routine for your project, and you have one routine per visor. You need to load the EDS file once per laptop, and you do that under Tools, EDS Hardware Installation Wizard. And just go through all the defaults. Next, next. And browse to the location. Uh, this could be on Dropbox. It's also included on the CD that comes with every camera. And now here we're going to uh, change the uh, icon, which is optional. It's in the same Dropbox folder as the EDS file. And the EDS file is the same one we've always had. That didn't, hasn't gotten changed yet. And finish, and it's installed. Next, we'll add a visor to our Ethernet network. We'll right-click on Ethernet, New Module, And we can type in sense apart or visor and pick the sense apart visor from the list. Click create. You have to type in visor 00, zero here because it has they all have to match. And type in your IP address. We'll use the default 192, 168, 100, 100. And OK. And next we're going to right click on it and we go to properties and we're going to update the RPI and this should be set to 65. Next we want to import the routines. You right click on main program, hover over add, and then hover down to import routine and then click on it. Now choose Visor 00. We have one routine per visor, and this name has to match the visor name we created earlier, as does the name of the add-on instruction we'll see later. We're going to use all the default options here, and this is importing the routine and add-on instructions and creating some tags. There's your add-on instructions. Now let's take a look at this routine. There's some edits in these rungs. I think it's the timeout tag. You can right-click on it and say new, OK, and it'll define a new timer. This is the trigger add-on instruction, job change, and status. And these all have to be across the line. You can't put any contacts in front of them. The status has some output bits we'll use later in this routine. This is the enable rung. Here we have the trigger once, and this little symbol I'm using to indicate something you've got to modify. I don't know when in your machine cycle you're going to want to trigger the visor, so you have to set that bit. Similarly, you have to write into this tag what job number you want. That's the tag. Whatever number you write there, this routine will set the job number in the visor to that number. So if you put in an invalid job number, you know, it will fault. You'll get a job change fault. And then you have to just rewrite a valid job number in that tag. Here's some alarms suggested to go to the HMI. And even if you don't want to do that, they can help with troubleshooting and startup. Um, next, this is a, uh, a startup routine. So on power up, what will happen is it will try to uh, write the job number from the PLC to the visor because on power up they may be different and the PLC must roll. The sec second thing it will do is trigger the visor once and then everything is good to go. And on the, that first trigger, the 
results are ignored. The next part is finding your data, your, your detector results, and your payload items. It, it's broken up into a lot of different areas. First, we've got discrete outputs. These are the discretes that are in the power I.O. cable. They can be sent over Ethernet IP as well. And next, we have these logical outputs, which are configured like discrete, but only exist in Ethernet IP. You can see that's byte 80 and 81, different bits. Now we're on to the payload. First, in bytes 92, um, you have the, the bits from the payload. And then here you have the strings from the payload, which starts in byte 116. And you can copy it into a string tag of the same length that matches, for example, your code. Next, we've got numbers. Uh, these are all of length 4. Those are 32-bit uh, double integers. Some of the tags are actually, you can see here, of length 1 and 2, which would be 8 or 16 bytes. And then uh, we also have floating points, which are sent over as a... Um, 32-bit integer multiplied by a thousand. This video is an introduction. The, the next thing you need is just a table showing where the data you configured in the visor ends up in the PLC. And we have that. It's linked in the comments below. And we also have a quick start guide that it's one page that outlines this uh, video and we've got a more in-depth step-by-step procedure also linked in the comments below.